Better design below the waterline. Fish friendly marinas. Hi, my name is David Lennon, Director of Sustainable Oceans International, and I'll run through a couple of ideas of ours where we see opportunity for marinas, whether it's in the design or the construction phase, to mitigate their impacts and even enhance or at least maintain biodiversity. My contact details are at the end of this presentation, so if you've got any questions or want to discuss your project, feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call. Marine construction, habitat loss versus habitat gained. When we construct a marina, we re remove habitat or we bury it. We form a dredging, we might remove some habitats and uh, then we might bury others when we construct the sea walls, berths, etc. And as a result of this, there's ecological services and biodiversity um, reduced in some way. But we add a lot of material when we construct a marina as well. Sea walls, rock walls, berths, pilings. There's literally thousands of square meters of new material added below the waterline. And this is where we see opportunity, especially if we can be brought in during the design and the construction phase. Impact pathways of constructing marinas, well, the dredging, dredge plume placement, dredge material, construction rock walls, berths, etc. And the impacts may include reduction in ecological services and biodiversity due to the loss of important fauna and flora. There's a number of mitigation opportunities um, prior to construction and post-construction. For example, prior to construction, we often get brought in to first survey the area and write a mitigation plan for the coral reef or the reef area that the dredging's got to go through or the marina report is going to go through. And then prior to construction, important habitat such as corals, important fauna, is moved out of the way or the priority species are relocated. And in some cases, constructed reefs are used to offset the reef that cannot be moved. So we can actually duplicate even the, uh, the shape of the reef that's going to be lost, that's considered of high value and relocate it somewhere else to offset impacts. Now ideally it is better if we're brought in at the design phase and the post construction rather than the post construction phase because what we're finding is the EIAs, the environmental impact assessments that are often done for these type of developments, do not tend to do the surveys that are required when you're looking at relocating or mitigating impacts on important fauna such as corals. So this means that additional studies then have to be um, scoped, contracted out, mobilization uh, involved, you know, and then the work conducted and reports written. So it can add time and there is a potential there to delay your project. So get us in at the EIA phase and you'll save a lot of time and money. Also, when, during the design phase is when real mitigation opportunities can be capitalized on because it's a lot easier, of course, to incorporate them in the design right from, right from the get-go rather than trying to retrofit a structure after it's already been built. So as I've been going on about, marinas have a significant surface area below the waterline, and we feel it's severely underutilized because... Uh, Typically right now we design structures to engineering specs so they don't fall down and they serve their engineering purpose. But we don't think about what happens below the waterline. We go for aesthetics. Um, often, for example, that photo there on the bottom right is a good example of how it's just human nature to design things with straight lines and smooth surfaces. Aesthetically, that's what we like. Uh, when it comes to creating opportunities for nature, though, and nature's not so crazy about smooth surfaces and straight lines. So what happens below the waterline is where we get involved and uh, specialize in helping you include features that create opportunities for nature. Even the dredge material is a useful resource. Um, instead of just placing it offshore somewhere, it can be placed in configurations and certain pile shapes that actually enhance productivity. Rock walls are a great one. Um, as I was saying, though, a lot of rock walls that we see are padded nice and smooth, so the rocks are nice and 
flush and straight lines, and of course that doesn't create a lot of opportunities for nature or it severely limits the opportunity for nature. So there's ways to enhance rock walls, and it's very easy to do when they're being constructed. There's ways to add rock spurs, that we call them, to the, uh, the toe and further out from rock walls to enhance biodiversity. There's the marina itself. And, you know, the values include people buying coastal properties, uh, buying them or inhabiting them or using them because they do like the marine environment. So uh, there is a natural trend there to want to see more fish and more marine life around around that area that they're, in, they're visiting or using or buying. So it's not just about biodiversity offsets or maintaining biodiversity. There's opportunity to construct artificial reefs or constructed reefs. These can be within the development. They might be under jetties. They might be around jetties. And they might be in another strategic area outside of the development. So the development might contribute to the construction of a, a reef that's uh, an important recreational fishing reef or a diving reef, or it might be an important contribution to commercial fisheries. There's a whole range of opportunities when it comes to constructing reefs. So we'd love to talk to you about your project. Feel free to contact me, send me an email, or give me a call, and uh, yeah, let's discuss uh, what we might be able to do for you. Thank you.